actually, first of all, thank you very much, all of you who are here today, the family who came from all over Europe and even South America and India for these nice Easter Miller days. First of all, I want to offer my obeisance to my spiritual master as it is the custom and it's also heartfelt. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutali Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Ramuni Namaste Saraswati Devi Uravani Prachalini Nirvishesha Shunyavati Paskatya Dishatalini He has relieved us from the darkness of ignorance by Oknas opening us the eyes of spiritual eagerness to see our true identity. This is a subject which has accompanied us for a long time, the true identity. And also tonight, it will be the subject again our true identity. Jivera Svarupaya Haya Nidhira Krishna Das. This true identity we have is to be a servant. We are all servants. Christian was doing hard work to fix up this place. I saw it last time. It was half in shambles, so he did service. We are coming here, we are doing service. Some people are in the kitchen, they are doing service. Some people make the music, they are making service. Some people look after the agriculture, especially permaculture. They are doing service. Somebody is cleaning, they are doing service. We have to understand that our constitutional position, our happy position, is to be servants. But in this world we also have a very intense eagerness to become master. <coughs> the term master is often used, mastership, master competition. And this master is all in the heads of everybody. Will I be a servant good enough to be considered a master servant? <laughs> but the master servant would be the master of the servants, showing that we are the real servants, because mastery means extraordinary performance. <coughs> that will bring about some kind of master consideration. So, the beauty of being a servant, this is, this is real life. Like we have a, a very friendly and very important midwife here with us today, who delivered our little Yamuna, who we celebrated today here. The midwife is a great servant, always into service. Service to the baby, service to the parents, service to humanity, to deliver a new baby into this world. So, service should not be despised. Rather the opposite. We should learn to sing and dance in joy of being able to serve. Now, what does that really mean? This service, constitutional position of being a servant, first of all, it's very clear. I've explained that the other day, that we are being maintained. None of us, without an exception, is maintaining the others. Even the parents may think that we are maintaining our kids. In the end of the day, you don't know where to get the rice, you don't know where to get the bananas and how to get the apples. 
they are provided by a different instance. And even though you can go with your money into the shop and buy them, it's still not from you. So to understand that there's somebody, he is the real biggest servant. And what do you want to call that divine agency providing everyone in the world with everything they need? What do you want to call that? Or him, or her, or however you want to call the maintainer. He's a top example of servant. He's so keen that everyone gets what they need that he even provides tons of food for the elephants and a little bite for the mosquito. But he is providing for every single being in this world some food so that they can thrive and survive. So, if we consider that those above us, like in the Vedic times, we see Vayu is controlling the wind, so we offer him our respect to Vayu. <coughs> Agni, he is controlling the fire, so we offer our respect to Agni. Viva Swan is responsible for the movement of the sun, and we give our respect to him. So in this way, we always see a servant connected to sunlight, moonlight, uh, Mother Earth movements. Everything has personality. Even the microbes in your tummy, they also have individual personality. It may be a little hard to grasp that, but do you know they also fall in love? They have a whole love life there in your tummy. Huh? And you don't even know about it. There is so much life and so many dimensions going on in this world. And all of them without any exceptions. There are exhibits of service. Sometimes we do service consciously, sometimes we do service unconsciously. But it is the nature of this world that everyone is a servant. And those who want to be masters, they will always be frustrated because there is no way of attaining mastership. In the Vedas, Svetas Patalu Parishat, it says, Nitya Nitya Nam Chaitana Chaitana Nam Eko Bhav Nam Vidadati Kama. It says there's many living entities in this existence, many, 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 but one of them maintains all the others. So this being maintained and who maintains us is a good question, but in the end of the day, the one who maintains all of us is also a servant, and you are also a servant. So, here's the point where, where competition fails us. This world of competition seems to be like an impulse. Oh, I want to perform, I'll perform the others. But in the teachings of loving service, as we receive from the Vedas, we want to outperform the one we serve being the best servant. And that person who we are trying to serve is adamantly convinced that he will be a better servant of you than you of him. So you have a tremendous competition. Oh, please accept this little massage, accept this food I cooked for you. And you say, no, 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 you did that. Please look at this little house I made for you. Look at this bicycle I bought for you. Look. No, 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 no. It's like an outperform. 
supporting each other in service. This is an incredible power which we can learn from the divine. It is the very extraordinary movement of the divine. And in that competition, there is no chance of disenchantment. When it's the opposite, that you want to be served and then you are not satisfied with the service which is being rendered to you, then both of you are in trouble, the servant and the so-called master as well. So there's always a stressful relationship. But when you are a servant for the sake of service, then even if you cannot serve that excellently and somebody says, why didn't you do a better job? Then you will turn around and say, I'll try next time, I'll try next time. This time I was just not able to do it. So wonderful as you expected. So, this is our, our spiritual dimension of servitorship. And it's it has a facility of <coughs> transmitting the ecstasy of existence. Because you are in an ecstatic position when that what you are doing is that what you want to do. Then you have a full chance, even if it doesn't work out, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that you have the right and the duty to do your job, but don't be attached to the result. Maybe, maybe it'll come out, maybe it won't come out, but you do your duty. So if I am allowed to do that which I really wish to do, that what really fires me up and, and surcharges my existence, then of course I feel ecstasy. And that is what Bhakti Yoga is, it is devotional ecstasy. It's, a, it's, a, it's called the path of Prema. Prema Dhamma Deva Meva Nomi Gaura Sundaram Prema Dhamma Deva Meva Nomi Gaura Sundaram That is the teaching which especially our great Sri Dashrina Maharaj, he is second one in the row, he was an expert. And my dear friends, you brought some new books from Srila Srila March here for this festival. Are they here already? Where uh, are they exhibited? This is the, the most wonderful book called The Poetry of a Saint. And they were brought from England here. And they were like the fifth sermon of devotion uh, produced by him. So this book and also more little books. Uh, where are, do you have them uh, in the Harikata Ashram? Can you please supply them to that they are available on the book table? Uh, you, uh, from your table. <laughs> <laughs> so you can obtain these books simply leaving a donation. Whatever donation you like to leave, you can pick up from Paramatma. I can, it was printed in India and it is such a sweet book and I'll give one to Christian in appreciation for having us here in this uh, in this event. So please enjoy this because it's really a book of love. So, servant, it has a negative connotation. People think, oh, he's just a servant. They ask, do you have any servants? No. They say, we can't afford a servant anymore. Like in the old days, every house had a servant. That was very normal. In South America, still you find 
any well-to-do person has several servants at home. So, so it is coming to people's mind that is not a very auspicious thing to be a servant. But when you come to the spiritual consciousness, you will see that servitorship is the real glory of our life. Something like when, when we practice yoga and we want to give up the wrong desires. If you give up the desire to be master, you can just dance happily because nobody is going to tell you you have to be a master. No. And you say, you're a servant? Yes. You like them? Yes. What do, you, what do you want to do? I want to serve you also. What service can I do for you? And many people say, maybe he's sick. Maybe something wrong in his head. How can he say that he wants to be a servant? But when you're looking for somebody who you're going to pay, you want somebody to be a servant. You want somebody who says, yes, I will do what you tell me. Something like that. Mm. So this is the intrinsic revelation in the servitorship. It can only be understood by serving the divine. Because if you do service to the divine, you are divinely connected. And if you are divinely connected, then what more you want than being divinely connected? And serving the divine, now if you say, I'm a servant, where do you work? In the weapon factory, we are making machine guns. You mean you're such a poor fool, you're working in a factory as a servant and you're making machine guns? You must be out of your mind. Well, some people, they do that because they have no other job, they just don't know what to do. Some other, they got this job in this horrible factory and they don't even think too much about what they're doing. But the thing is that you have to decide whom you want to serve if you want to make your service an entirely satisfying experience, long-lasting, or better even so, nitya, eternal in nature. I am the servant, and I am so joyful to be the servant, and I never want to be anything but the servant. Of course, it is something like in Krishna Loka, very interesting phenomena manifests. And that is that Krishna, he wants to be the servant of his servant. So that's a very uncomfortable situation. The devotee, he cannot tolerate the idea that the Lord is serving him. But he can't avoid it. Because he's doing everything anyway. He's doing everything, he's making everything possible for you. He gave you a voice to sing. He grew your hair so you're not just running around without hair. Huh? He gave everything. He gave, installed the eyelids over your eyes, which are always cleaning the eyes without you even noticing. Huh? Always you have the eye washing system all turned on, on automatic. Huh? How is this? And he has put so many things on automatic, by the way. Your digestion is on automatic. And so many other things, for example, dopamine is on automatic. Always you can call up on dopamine if you have a pain or something tremendous. Then that gets activated and you either pass out or you can tolerate it. So, the, bio, the biology, the intelligent design of the creation, all that is a service. The Lord of love has given you his love and he wants to serve you in love on top of it. And you say, no, my Lord, that's it now. <laughs> Now I am going to be your servant. I insist. 
and the Lord he just smiles. <laughs> little, little, little Bhakta wants to be servant of the Lord. Huh? He says, okay, okay, if you really want to, and go in this world and do some service for the people. That's why Jesus says, whatever you do to the lowest and most simple, needy, that is done to me. So, this is a, a very similar idea. Service. Be a servant. And be joyful being a servant. Be the best of servants. Another thing, the servant, the can never get angry. Because if something that's wrong, goes wrong, then the servant is just sad because he could not finalize his service. Maybe he can try again tomorrow. But servant, he is always eager to fulfill his master's demand. Now, you have to accept somebody as your master because he is the natural master. Because you can embrace him as your master and he's not in the sector of suspicion. Suspicion leads to suspension. If you are suspicious of the one who you are serving, then you will be suspended. Or you suspend yourself. But there is no possibility without good faith and a happy service mood. So we want to serve. And that is what is the real practice of yoga. Yoga is the service. In Hatha Yoga, the yoga teacher teaches you how to do Hatha Yoga. In Karma Yoga, he's teaching you how to do selfless work. Do a lot and don't get paid. Not a penny. Because it is devotional service. It is, it is something to be done as your voluntary charity. In Jnana Yoga, you are receiving the service of the Rishis and you are applying your study ability as a service because you are not studying just for you to feel a little bit more superior. No. The service of the, those who have knowledge have the duty to apply that knowledge to serve others. And in Bhakti Yoga, forget it, sold out. No, no conditions, no, 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 no interruptions even. He is a servant and he accepts it. Not only a servant, it's not enough. The Bhakti Yoga teaches us to become the servant of 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 the maintainer of the gopis. Gopil Padakama Layor Dasa 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 Anudasa. That is our idea. We want to be connected with the Supreme so that our service can also be meaningful. Because basically, if I do a service, I can brush your shoes. And you may say, stop it. Do you want me to pay for? Do you want me to pay for you brushing me the two, the shoes? I said, no, I don't want to be paid. I want to brush your shoes because I like you and I want to please you in this way. Then you will feel very awkward. You feel like, <laughs> why did he do it? Then he, please take this donation. No, 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 I don't want to take anything from you. And then you feel even worse. How is it that he did the service for me without any return? I don't know, I cannot understand. So this is, the relationship in the, in the world of duality because maybe you really don't deserve that anybody cleans your shoes. Is it quite possible that your awkwardness is well reasoned? But when you're serving God, and in the service of God you're becoming the servant of the servant of so many others, then it is the most powerful connection. Because even though I'm connected to somebody who is somewhat not very deserving, but the causeless mercy of my master is flowing through me to connect him to whatever dimension may be available. I don't go into details here, but the fact is that 
My connection with the Lord is the connection with his devotees to serve the public. So then also again we are servant. And is there anything more nicer in service than seeing the people happy with your service, appreciating it, uh, and uh, being benefited or even so much grateful <coughs> that they want to also do service. There was a movie out many years ago where the teacher told all the students I want a formula of you how to make this world a better place. <coughs> so all of you work out your way. And this one young chap in the movie he went home and thought about it and thought about it. He said, I'll do it. So he invented the system that you make three favors to three people who they definitely don't expect any favor from you. Then if they ask you, why did you do this favor for me? Then you say, so that you will also do three favors to three people who are not expecting any favor from you. And then if they ask you, again, you just say the same thing. So he said in this way, there will then be a, a multiplication of people making favors to each other, which is like a, a, a favor chain. That was his idea. And he chose the teacher and some others, and he made favors for them, incredible, life-changing favors, which he didn't expect. And they asked him, why did you do that? And he said, because you told me I should find the system. This is my thesis. This is my thesis, a favorite thesis. So teachers deeply impressed him also. And all of a sudden there were favors coming by the thousands from all directions. That was the theme of the movie. Now, I tell you one thing about my spiritual master and our spiritual tradition. When we take initiation, he didn't ask us to do three favors to three people. No, he asked us to do as many favors to as many people in your own life you can afford or be able to do, and this will make you a good yogi. You are a favor machine. <laughs> huh? Now go and do your favors. Figure it out how to do favors to others. And in return, what do you want? More people to do more favors tomorrow. That's all you should aspire for. And you'll be surprised what happens when you adopt this attitude. And initiation actually means that you want to favor others giving them that love which you have received in one way or another. Sometimes a favor means to hold somebody's hand and press it and look in his eyes and say, it will all be good, stick to it. And he will say, wow, you help me so much. <laughs> holding his hand and squeezing it a little bit. <laughs> have you heard some such cases? Sometimes all you have to do is listen to a person. A person who is pained with certain agonies and you say, my friend, tell me what's your problem. And then he goes half an hour talking without stopping. And you go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he goes, oh. And when he finishes speaking his problem, he's already smiling. Today one person said to me, thanks for listening. And the person was telling me fantastic things. I didn't do any favor to listen. But the, the thing is, the 
the person was so accustomed to be turned up when she wants to tell something that she had to thank me for listening. So, <coughs> favors, making favors and favors and favors. This is life. And you know something? There always will be somebody who needs a favor. Always there will be somebody who wants to listen to the Veda or eat some Prashant or get some consolation or simply get an invitation like when we make our invitations we, are, we mean it this is an invitation to the Krishna temple come for our Sunday love feast <coughs> just a short while ago the vegetarian times of the United States the editorial said we have to accept that the vegetarian movement started blossoming in the United States with the Hare Krishna Sunday love feasts. Even Steve Jobs used to go throughout of Seattle to get a good Sunday food because he had no money for buying good food when he was a student. <laughs> he said that in an interview. So, the vegetarian. So, if I can convince a person to become a vegetarian, do you know how many animals are standing in line applauding <laughs> uh, and giving me hugs and kisses? Oh? You mean you stop this guy from eating us? Hey, festival, festival. <laughs> That's why I think many people will become vegetarians here because it's a vegan hotel. So it uh, teaches a very important lesson. Eat without giving trouble to animals. So in this way, you know, I could give you tons of other ideas what favors you could do, but I don't think you really need them. I think you have enough ideas of your own, but it's a question of that servant a servant, he does the favor with joy. That is the thing of service. Do it with joy. Whoever is doing something with joy, he is in joy. And what does it mean to be in joy? It means he's enjoying. Huh? <laughs> what you do in joy, you will be enjoying. <clears throat> but you don't do it to enjoy, you do it out of joy to give joy. And then you understand that joy is something that doesn't belong to me, it's a gift. And you're so grateful for every moment, for every breath, for every glass of water. Here it is. Or to speak of such a wonderful feast like Dina Bando was cooking today, Indian specialty feast with his wife and children. We had a real Indian feast today, and tonight we're going to have Balaram dancing for you. Some special Indian Bhagra dance he will present. <coughs> so, a dancer is a servant, we are a servant. And is there some bigger servant and somebody is a serve, smaller servant? No, no competition. Everybody serves the way he can. Whatever service he can do, he should do. Now, if you can't do a lot and you just do a teeny little bit, then you may not be so joyful by doing it because you're more careful of what you don't want to do rather than doing what you could do because then you would be joyful. The joy of giving also has a price. Being there entirely at the disposition of the joyful giving. 
Just give up the competition. There is no competition. You are a servant. And God is a servant himself. Of course, he's the best of all servants. And if you serve him, you're connected to him, so you have the best connection. So you don't have to complain about lack of self-esteem. Because if you're a servant of God, and he's asking for that in the Bhagavad Gita, give me please a little water, a little fruit, a flower, but give it to me with love. And in this way, all is running. The service is running. Serving with love. That is what Prabhupada gave to us. Prabhupada gave us such an amazing service. And Sri Maharaj, these books he gave, such a service. And Puri Maharaj, a life of service. Absolutely. And we cannot talk about Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur because he's the one who put into motion of service everyone. All Sri Narayi Maharshila Bhakti Bhai Bhapuri Maharshila Everybody is moving in this world of service because of him. Of Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. But there is no competition. Because he will say that, you see, the Guru is the servant of his disciple. Definitely. All he has to do is make sure the disciple is well. The disciple has what they need. And therefore of joy serving others. So the, the Guru is always in a service mood. And then sometimes the disciples, they ask him, <coughs> Can we serve you? And he looks at them, Serve me? What do you mean? If you want to serve me, you have to serve others. I have no time to receive your service. I'm too busy running around. Somebody tells that the proper problem. I will always want to sit at your little feet. The prophet said, that's a good one. These feet are moving non-stop around. You will not be able to stay still next to them. Huh? Get moving. Do service. Invent yourself as a loving servant. I promise you, you will not waste your time. You will never repent having done that. And you will see in mystical way the Lord will provide for you. That not many people can understand. What is he advocating? That we should all become beggars? Well, well. Beggars of love, at least. We are beggars of love, aren't we? Because is there anybody who owes you? Is there anybody in this world who is meant to give love to you? But then I ask you again, is anybody here who can live without love? So then what are you? Are you just like me? A beggar of love? Running around the world and begging? Hey, can you please give me a chance? What means I'm begging you to love? I beg you to accept my service. I beg you to come and listen to my class. I beg you to eat what I cooked. I beg you, I beg you to notice my identity submissively disposed to do something you need me to do or just appreciate the feelings of my heart I have already. <laughs> it sounds like that. I think I don't feel ashamed to call myself a beggar of love. Some people say, oh, you're a beggar of this. Well, my name is Beggar, Tridanti Bhikkhu. Sanyasi is called Tridanti Bhikkhu. He's the beggar of the triple stuff. That's my triple stuff here. You go with the Sanyasi Danda and you beg everybody, please. 
body, mind, and speech all belong to thee, my beloved. With this, I close my words for tonight, because lots of other things are coming towards us. But if you do have any questions shooting out of you, like, hey, you have to say something about this more, go ahead, because I don't like classes without any reciprocation, without some feedback, commentaries. Therefore, Yes. Um, could you, you were discussing the servant uh, attitude from the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna has a lot of instruction in the Bhagavad Gita. Can you just elaborate on some of Krishna's promises in the Bhagavad Gita to his servants? And that would seem really nice. Uh, it's in the 12th chapter of the Gita. In the Bhaktiaman Abhijavan Javati, Yaman Yashas Mitatvata, Krishna is emphatically Yaidam Paramangu Yamra Bhakti Shavidashyati, Bhakti Mayi Paramkritva Mami Vaishya Shriya Shashriya. The one who is the most dear of all to me is the one who gives the sermons of the Gita to the others. And there will never ever be anybody more dear to me. So he's giving us a chance to be dear to him by simply talking about him. And that's why we should know the Bhagavad Gita pretty good. So that we can also talk real wise stuff and not just some half-baked speculation of what we remember of the Gita. So yeah, he says many things. Uh, what to do? to please him and to get closer to him and and what is the result of that like for example he says if if you are not jubilant nor sad you don't lament nor your desire even there's there's very wonderful conditions or very unlucky conditions in the, in the things which approach you such a person who can do like this, he's very dear to me. My devotee, who is not dependent on the ordinary course of affair, who is clean, pure, expert, without preoccupation, and don't, is free of sufferings, and he's not eager, to control the results of what he's done doing, he's very dear to me. That person who never brings anybody into difficulties and who is not confused by anybody, who in happiness and sadness, in fear and in preoccupation, he maintains himself equilibrium, he's very dear to me. So Krishna gives so many hints um, what is good, what makes a person very close to the Supreme, and how you can learn more and more. But you see, your question Krishna is answering actually in almost all the verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, I just took a little extract of what he says who is dear to him. But he is describing everything. He's describing the yoga process. He's describing the path of renunciation. He's also describing the duties of the Brahmins and, and how we prepare ourselves to be always in connection with him. 